All right, you are listening to the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. Hello, I'm Caleb. And I'm Rachel. And I'm Jake. And I read the footnotes. Yay! Yay! Yay. Congratulations. (laughs) All right, in today's Nerd Edification Hour, we will have uh, movie and TV news. Yep, a doodle. Then we'll have Nintendo news. And third, as always, we will have your nerd vocab. That's my segment. Yes, indeed. It is your segment. <laughs> it is your segment. We named it your segment. And fourth is... Science news. Science and technology and all that good stuff. And then lastly, we will talk about chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate at the end of the show. All right, here on the Nerd Edification Hour. So, Rachel, what, uh, what's going on with the TV and the movie stuff? There is a ridiculous amount of movie and TV stuff going on right now. There was a lot. If you guys could see the script, there's like a whole bunch of pages. Oh, That's, we had we a lot ha- of stuff. We have a ridiculous amount. Of... We had to remove a bunch of stuff. Oh, yes, Look we at did. All the stuff we had to take out. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But first off, what? The Fantastic Four trailer premiered, what? Was it yesterday? Y- yesterday it was about yesterday monday yeah it was it a couple days out. ago um the release date for the movie is now officially the 7th of august of this year and the trailer is super gritty it is yes they took it a different direction it's not like funny you know like haha and light like you know it's usually like it usually is it's going for more gritty and dark and it's going for the dark night kind of i guess so I don't know. I did like the special effects. The only thing I wish I could change was the way they had the title arranged, which makes it what, <laughs> like they put fan a, four stick because they put the four right in the middle of fantastic. Like, I understand why they did that. It looks kind of neat, but at the same time, when you type it out not in the pretty font that they use, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I don't know if I like yet is Hacker Doctor Doom. Yeah, that's a bit weird, but... That in, bothers me, and I can hear all of my friends who are real big comic book buffs screaming in the distance. In the trailer, they did reveal that Latveria will be a possibility in the movie because they showed showed it on a map, and then they showed the web... They showed a thing right. for it, something right. like that. In the, well, that's super neat. So Latveria confirmed. Yay! <laughs> um, another bit of movie news... Anyway, is several well-known comedic actresses are going to be are said to be in negotiations for, negotiations for the new Ghostbusters movie. Now, what I'm what I'm serious when I say actresses because this is going to be like a female-led Ghostbusters movie. It's like a kind of like a reboot, a revamp of it with lady Ghostbusters instead of men. So the People that are in talks with it are former and current SNL cast members Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie Jones are in early talks for the film, um, according to Variety. 
And um, earlier this week, director Paul Feig, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, confirmed that Melissa McCarthy was taken into talks as well. So that's some pretty well-known ladies that might be on the big screen. I don't know how I feel yet about the um, all-female-led Ghostbusters, since I'm very partial to the original. Well, hopefully it's good. I mean... I hope so, they, too. They have a good source material that they can go off of. Another thing that they're trying to bring back is Indiana Jones. Now, I love the original trilogy. I adore it. They're, they're perfect to me. I wouldn't change a thing. The fourth one has, a bit of a, has put a bit of a bad taste in the mouth of people. I mean, I watched it for nostalgia factor. I thought it was okay. It was okay. Harrison was Ford okay. is getting up there in years. <laughs> he, he is. He is, but he's... He's a classic actor. Let's just say that. He's awesome. And I hope that his career continues, even as he ages. It has so far. I'm sure it will. Especially I mean, with the Star Wars stuff coming up. But anyway, with the next, the next Indiana Jones, if they're going to reboot it, they're looking at Chris Pratt. And at first I was like, well, reboot of Indiana Jones. But then I was like, but Chris Pratt, okay, <laughs> okay, I can see this. Yeah, All right. He, he seems like a good fit. I'd say I don't know much about actors or anything, but Chris Pratt, yeah, I'd say I'd say he I he'd get hit through. Oh yeah. Um and, and we're still going with this these news. It's it's now uh, it's, it's back into the superhero stuff. Um for those of you who love X Men, Fox has confirmed that they're developing a TV series for it set in their universe. Um Fox Entertainment co-chairman Jeremy Newman is reportedly their source, saying that negotiations with Marvel, who have who have to sign off on the project, have slowed the process. So they're looking at a 2016-2017 TV season. So what this tells me is it's going to be a live-action X-Men on the TV, which right now um, comic stuff is has a really heavy presence in the live-action section of TV. DC more than Marvel, and Marvel's trying their hand with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter, and now reportedly this. So, we'll see. We'll see. So, Fox is also doing the TV show? Yeah, No, Fox is doing, is okay. doing it, but doing they well. have to get Marvel to sign off for it, because Fox controls the rights and the name for it. Marvel itself just is Marvel, not Marvel owned by Disney. It's their character, so they still have a little bit of say. Yeah, it's all a Not bit much, weird. but a little. <laughs> and speaking of Marvel, David Tennant, my favorite doctor, the 10th doctor, is going to play the villain Kilgrave in Marvel's AKA Jessica Jones, which is going to be a 13 episode series on Netflix following Daredevil. Um, they're not exactly sure when it's going to start filming, but all, all I know is that David Tennant is now the villain. And you know what they say: if you, you know, if you don't die young as a hero, you live long enough to be the villain. <laughs> so um, while that doesn't say that something's going to happen to David Tennant, no. But you know, he was spoilers. He was the Doctor <laughs> for so long, and people know him as the Doctor and as a hero as a hero character for so long that he's going to play a villain now. A well-known villain in the Marvel Universe, as they say. And Interesting. Uh, is it the last bit? No, we have two more little parts. Two more. Last bit of Marvel. Um, in just two months, 20th Century Fox is going to begin, begin production on the long-awaited Deadpool solo movie. Though it might seem like the film is at a tough road getting to the big screen, star Ryan Reynolds says that the production happened the right way and is allowing them more freedom. Um, he also said that they don't have as big a budget for the movie, but that just means they get to be all innovative about it. So I'm excited because I've been waiting for a Deadpool movie for God only knows how many years. <laughs> Who else is excited? I'm excited. I like Deadpool. What do you think, Jake? About a Deadpool movie? Uh, Jimmy Chongas and stuff like that. I don't really know much about them. How dare. I'm going to have to get you Darn it, Jake. on the right. comic book I'm going to have to put series. you into the nerd edification Is chamber. Is there like a cartoon I can watch? Or? Kind of. Uh, he's, he's in some Marvel cartoons. He has cameos. Um, although everywhere. they've... they've They've dumbed him down a bit, and when I say dumbed down, I don't mean, like, made him stupid. I mean, like, made him kid less... Kid-friendly. Yes, more right. kid-friendly. Um, and our last bit of news for this movie and TV news section is... The most important bit of news, in my opinion. Oh, in your opinion. <laughs> yes, in okay. my opinion. Um, well, Marvel is important and all that, but... 
on Monday morning, Disney announced that Emma Watson is going to be playing Belle in the studio's live action take on Beauty and the Beast. And I, for one, am super excited, especially if it includes singing, because then I can make the joke in the theater. Well, look, it's just Hermione the musical, because Belle's supposed to be the really smart princess, and Emma played a super smart character, Hermione, so I don't know. I just thought it was neat. Like the bookworm? Yeah. Who's kind of, nobody, everyone's kind of annoyed by right, her? Right, right, Exactly. Exactly. So I'm super excited about that. Like, you have no idea how excited I am. I mean, this thing has been rumored for a long time. People have wanted her to play it. But now it's only just now been formally said, yes, she is going to play it. And I could not be happier, personally. So Emma Watson confirmed. And next up, we will have your Nintendo news. And we'll talk about all the things Nintendo is doing. Yes. All right, here on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio, and this next song is uh, Skillet Whispers in the Dark, and we will be right back. And we are back on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. My name is Rachel, and I have next to me my friend Jake. Hello. And across from us, we have Caleb. What's up? Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm here. So <laughs> now we have everyone's favorite section. Everyone's favorite by popular demand and vote and all the other things. That, Nintendo yes. <laughs> News! Yay! Yay! Nintendo! All the stuff. Yes. So tell us about Nintendo. What's, what's going on with them right now? All right. So, you know, Nintendo's been kind of financially struggling after three years, and it's finally paying off. This uh, last in the last uh, last night, uh-huh. an analysis report suggested Nintendo uh, would report a three million dollar profit for the past three months. So that's good. That is really good. That means they did like spectacular on their holiday sales. Indeed, you know, because everybody wanted to buy a Wii U to get Bayonetta two and Smash Bros Wii U and and they also wanted like to buy a. Th- 3DS, which is, you know, they're probably kicking themselves in the butt for that because yeah. the new 3DS launches in just a few short weeks. Well, if they listened to the show, they would have known about that ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? I um, know, you know what you're what saying. saying. I know. That's why <laughs> okay. they need to be listening to us. And Jake is over here laughing. All right. Because he knows it's true. <laughs> he knows it's true. Okay. People should be listening to us because All right, Caleb. we have yes. the news. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm not trying to be prideful or anything. I'm oh, just goodness gracious. All right. So uh, the net income for the past nine months has been at 59.5 billion yen, which is yen. a lot. Which is a lot. And right it's there. up from 14.3 at the last report. So they generated a lot. Indeed, they did. And unfortunately, though, their, their, um, their, their forecast for marketing and stuff is right. going to go down. They're expecting a downturn. Which that either means they're going to do something big, or that means they're just expecting that. Well, a lot it, of sales it to could happen. mean that you know, with all the different um, conventions and um, electronics just shows going on in the next couple of months up until E3, there might, may or may not be a lot of announcements from then, from then on, and you know. They probably are expecting um, a, a decrease because they are shipping out all of those new 3DSs. And all that. So that is also going to affect what they make, too. Yeah, this is true. All the all that. Also, next up uh, for Pokemon stuff, Hoopa has been confirmed. Hoopa okay. confirmed. Let's let's explain who is Hoopa is. Hoopa? It's a Pokemon. Well, it's a legendary Pokemon, for those of you who don't know. Pokemon is uh, Pikachu. I'm sure you've seen him on the Thanksgiving Day Parade. If yeah. you've watched him, well, he shows up in that. Hoopa... What they originally found, hackers found him in the code of Pokemon X and Y, if I remember correctly. And nobody knew what he was, where he was, and, you know, they just kind of assumed, oh, he must be a legendary because he's super powerful. What did he look like? Weird. He's uh, he's like a little imp. He's a ghost sidekick. He has uh, hoops on his he horns. Kind of, oh, is he that creepy looking purple thing that yes. looks like Cubay? Um, kind of, kind of, kind of, but with like ring, with like huge earrings and rings and rings that can bend very, dimensions and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of <laughs> like a very gaudy um, esper. Okay, if that makes sense. And I know he's, um, I kind of, you know, spoilers, but you know, it's Pokemon, so uh, he is going to have an alternate form. Okay. So he's gonna be even freakier looking, but you know, I, I kind of saw him like, oh, that's a thing. Yeah, it to me it looked really neat because this. 
Pokemon had originally been found j- just in the code for X and Y. So he had been planned several years ago now, what or, or y- a year ago. It was about a year. A year ago. Well, before they planned before that for development purposes and stuff yeah. like that. But they just waited, you know, until now to talk about it. Yeah, and they haven't posted a code or had a Wi-Fi event to get him yet, so, so I'm not sure. We're not sure when they're going to do that, but just kind of keep your eyes peeled. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll let us know. I'm sure somebody out there. And uh, yeah, he he kind of explains the whole in uh, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. They have these little rings that you find where yes. you can enter and you know catch legendary Pokemon and stuff. Okay. So that that kind of explains kind of explains that a bit. So he had something to do with that. Caleb, I thought you guys were talking about that one. No. Uh, Jake pulled out his cell phone trying to show us uh, Pokemans and stuff. It looks like that, okay. but it's not that. <laughs> All right, moving on. Is, um, are you still on the fence about you know getting a new 3DS? I kind of am, but I mean, eventually I'll get it, just not right away. But GameStop is uh, doing a thing around, across the United States in certain select stores uh, scheduled for February. February oh, okay. Uh, yes, February 7th from That's 1 p.m. Great. to 4 p.m. Uh, there's no... Um, on the on the website, Rachel linked me, there is a... A list of different stores. Yes, um, if you if you just Google, you know, GameStop new Nintendo 3DS event like demo, it'll sh- tell you what locations. Well, not necessarily store location, but cities that are doing it. Um, I believe. Um, I don't know if our local one is. I'd have to ask, as and then I'll put it up on the Facebook when I find out. Um, but pretty much what I heard is it's going to be. Um, a Majora's Mask demo on there to try out. That's what I heard. So. Well, yeah, well, I know for me, I'm going to try to wait till they actually come one with a capped card built in so I could do that because I think that would be right, but, pretty cool. But, but, but yeah, I do understand why I they're doing. I do. I, well, I know it's going to be good. Nintendo is not going to release something bad this <laughs> quickly um, after it was released in Japan in just October. They're they just not going to do that. So. I'm glad that they're doing this to give people an opportunity to try it out before, you know, like like you said, shelling out $200 for the system itself. So, we'll see. We will see, and that's it for... No, viewers, totally skipping a piece of news. Excuse me. Y'all. Yeah. Right. Well, did you want to talk about this one? I then? will talk about you this You can one. talk about that. Okay, Viz Media, which is the largest publisher, distributor, and license licensor of manga and graphic novels and anime in North America, is proud to announce the return of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the first time in more than two decades. The celebrated full-color graphic novel adaptation of the classic Nintendo game returns in a single special volume edition scheduled for May release under the company's Perfect Square imprint. So, which means if you did not get a chance to get the um, graphic novels for the a link to the past but you have all the other ones well now you can get it because they are re-releasing it so yay Ta-da. and the reason why that's in our nintendo news is because zelda is nintendo zelda because zelda <laughs> and now that's it for the nintendo news yes and J- we will be blah, 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 blah. we'll be back with jake with our nerd vocab right. up next sounds good jake and you're so silent uh, right now i don't uh I think okay. he's tired. Look, right. we've he's <laughs> probably had a lot of programming homework to do, like 15 hours worth, I'm pretty yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, Jake, this song is the one you suggested. The next yeah, uh, Pink Floyd's new album came out Ooh, goody. at the end of last year, and this is a song I really liked off of it. So here All right, you go. Here it is. Enjoy that. What's the name? Uh, Anacena. Okay. Spelled Anacena. the same ways forwards as backwards. So. Ooh, that's right. really cool. And we'll be right back here on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. Welcome to the Nerd Edification Hour here on the Alternation Radio, Panama City Beach. Panama City, not beach. <laughs> I'm from not Panama beach. City Beach. Uh, this is Gulf Coast State College. You're campus. a little bit. You're a little bit lost, I think. Uh, a little bit over the bridge. <laughs> uh, 
Over the river and through the woods. Well, that's Jake. I'm Rachel, and across from us is Caleb. For hello, those of you who Caleb. are just turning in. And Did you just say yeah. hello to yourself? Hello, Caleb. How are you today? Oh. I'm good, Caleb. <laughs> hello. That's really great. I'm glad. All right. Jake, you have something um, special for us today. It is that time of the show. It is the nerd vocab. And this week's nerd vocab is meta. 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 M E T A. And the definition we have here is a term, especially in art, used to characterize something that is characteristically self self referential. Self referential. Self referential. <laughs> For example, and this is in quotes. So I just saw this film about these people making a movie. And the movie they were making was about the film industry. Dude, that's so meta. That's Stop. Meta. Before my brain explodes. Uh, <laughs> and I've heard this term used in regards to PvP okay. in MMOs and sort of like your your talent builds and stuff. Yeah. And your weapons. That, that was, um, I couldn't find exactly that definition. I guess it hasn't been around for that long. But mm -hmm. it's like what's meta is what's like best or what's main yeah or like what you usually see like usually you have these certain builds that you stick to the book kind of like uh, I plus 30 powered uh, and I spec'd five points into ferocity I can hear all the MMO players like <laughs> hardcore MMO players in the background grumbling no it means this blah 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 well, if you would, if you wouldn't mind, you can you can tell us on our Facebook and our Twitter account, which is at Nerd Edification and Nerd Edification Hour on Facebook. Yes, you can send us a message. Yeah, or then, you can comment on this video when it goes up on YouTube. Or for those of you who viewing it now on YouTube, leave us a comment. <laughs> It'd make Caleb happy. Nice. It would make it Caleb would make, happy. It would make it would make me very happy, and it would be I mean a lot if you guys subscribed. Mm -hmm. To get one more subscriber, so I could do my challenge thing. Just that I had pause for like five seconds. We're and almost allow up them to, to what comment. is it now? Forty? Almost up to forty. Well, congratulations! Like one now is your time. 40. Hey, if you're sitting down and watching this video and you're you haven't commented yet, uh, now's the time. So go <laughs> ahead. Um, we are giving you the opportunity. We're giving you the chance right now. Go ahead and <laughs> click the box. Type in what you got to type in. Hit enter, and you're done. All right. And Jake, something interesting happened to you as well this week. Oh, you mean yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I had this a run This is story in. time with Jake. Story okay. time with Jake. This okay. is Jake's segment. <laughs> um, so my cats are indoor cats, but they love to be outside. But you have to watch them when they are outside so that they do not hop the fence or get lost. So I was watching my cats yesterday, and one of them chases a squirrel up the tree. And I'm sitting on a swing set by the tree, and I watch as the cat looks up and there goes the squirrel and then I, f I follow her eyes and her eyes go above my head and I'm like oh where's this squirrel it has jumped from the tree <laughs> uh, and it tries to reach the top of the swing set which I am sitting at but apparently it <laughs> slipped or something and the next thing I felt was the feeling of a basketball hitting my head <laughs> but it wasn't a basketball and I turned and oh there was this squirrel just Nailed me on the head, <laughs> fell from the sky, and it's a pretty tall swing set, to be honest. <laughs> that poor Jumped squirrel. from a tall tree, landed on my head, fell, it was okay, and it scurried along. <laughs> and my cat followed it. So, there you go. So, you may have saved that squirrel's life, because with think... Your, with their soft hair, you know. Yeah, think I of, didn't think I was scratched or anything. Well, think, think of what... Right. Think of, you know, it falling the distance without it landing on your head. It could have hurt itself. So you might have saved the squirrel's life, Jake. Yay. Soft head, yeah. <laughs> Jake saved the squirrel. Thank you. Because there's not enough of them in the world. I'm just kidding. There's, there's a lot of them probably, in my backyard. Oh, yeah. Probably too many. There's a lot of them here on campus, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah these the, the squirrels do not... They get, they get close to you, man. It's really weird. They do. Freaky. All right, next up, we will have your technology and your sciency news. And the song we're going to play is the Castle Rock uh, Black Betty remix kind of thing. What the heck is that? Sound effects. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, you are listening to the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio, and we will be right back. All right. 
You are listening to the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. I'm Caleb. Rachel is yes. right over yes. there. And I'm the master of staying up late. Jake, how you doing? Master <laughs> of staying up late, Jake. Yeah, because you have to program so much. That rhymes. Mm-hmm. I'm picturing you sitting in front of a, a laptop or a computer of some kind with multiple screens and just typing. Using Raptor in one screen and coding uh, on the next screen. Uh, yeah. It's all and disgusting. Sobbing to yourself <laughs> for a while. I know I was crying when I was doing my programming <laughs> homework yesterday, or the day, no, it was Monday. It was Monday, I'm sitting there. <laughs> common, so. th- common thought of all programmers. My code works. I don't know why. My code doesn't work. I don't know why. Exactly. That is exa- Hey, my code works. Cool. I'm done. It works. I don't know why, but it does. Did so, you put whatever. comments on all of the sections of your flowchart and yes. your uh, pseudocode? Yes. Good. good. Yeah, she said, yeah, it's good. I'm like, okay, cool. They're mm. talking about coding homework, and yeah. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, she's, like, she's like, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, what is new in the world of science new today? In science and technology. There's a lot. NASA took lot the stuff. largest photo ever taken. Really? Of the Andromeda Galaxy. Yeah, That's awesome. Go and look at it. How big was oh. it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a fact I pulled out of, my, out of my head. I don't have the numbers, how many pixels it is. So. Well, we will talk about NASA. But yes, we will. After, Good intro. So if you are an island nation and you might, you know, rising sea levels might be a cause of concern because, well, you're on an island surrounded by water. And when the water level rises, that's an issue. So Japan has taken it upon themselves to try and build an underwater city. Well, they're not trying yet. It's more of a proposal. It's a proposal, but it is not it is not just a pipe dream. It is an actual thing it that they a real, will make. A real go- wow. Happen. Japan. That's what they have said. Japan, you were you were putting your foot down. So apparently this proposed ocean spiral, Jake, hmm? is going to consist of a large <laughs> sphere See, just I'd- just below the surface and about 5 Hundred and forty six yards in diameter. I tried to I tried to make an uh an underwater city in Minecraft once and that uh didn't go too well. It went good at first, but it became increasingly difficult as I went on. So So this didn't oh, end well in the very end, no. no. So. so this ocean spiral is gonna be ocu- occupied by homes, businesses, and hotels. And under that, a spiraling structure leading down to the seafloor would provide a way for scientists to extract resources for energy. So in a st- like like you said, um, the statement that you just quoted by um, Hideo Imamura was said to the the Guardian, and he's the spokesman of uh, Shimizu Corp, the people in t- charge of the plan. Shimizu. Shimizu. Yeah. I can't I can't words today. <laughs> Shimizu, and how are you? Yep. I'm good. <laughs> well, all I gotta say about this is real life rapture. Anyone? I mean, yeah. Are we t- are are we like With, talking about Bioshock here? Well, kind of, except without the uh, slug stem cells and things like that. No horrible mutations where you spit fire. No out big of your daddies. Hands. No, um, no little sisters. Little sisters. Oh my gosh. No oh. little sisters. Please no. Please don't. <laughs> they creep me out. <laughs> don't do it. I mean, Japan does some creepy stuff, but I, I don't know if they'd go that far. But they will have some kind of weird. Uh, uh, like kind of like a, a thing where they can attach to the bottom of the ocean floor right. where they can get resources and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so. well, my question is, is once once you're in there, is there, I guess, some kind of transportation pipeline so you can no way get out? out. From, uh, the, from the picture I saw, there will be like a surface kind of thing. Elevator. Like yeah, there'll be a service, and then you you can um, you'll be connected to the other underwater cities like oh. through networks and stuff. But I, I'm sure you can I'm get sure a boat or a helicopter or something out of there. Right. I'm sure you're not just stuck there. Yeah. There's got to be a way to get out of that because you know just for just in case safety reasons, a I leak, guess. A leak happens. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> but I'm sure in they'll the event take that you have to get out, <laughs> like at the Rainforest Cafe, one of the aquariums. Oh, oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> nice reference. That's wow. Good. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure they have a whole bunch of escape pods. Or oh, that dinner was sure. ruined. <laughs> sure. What, what, Jake water is, all what, over what Jake is talking about, like speaking of like glass domes breaking, is what month, last year one of the giant aquariums in, no, it wasn't the Rainforest Cafe. It was in um, the dinosaur version of it. I don't know. It was in the dinosaur version of the okay. Rainforest Cafe in downtown Disney. And one of those giant aquariums, 
busted and water and fish went everywhere. Mm-mm. I have a live fish on top of my grilled fish. I told you not to tap on the glass. Yeah, like so pretty mu- like so pretty much why 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 this I guess why you why this makes me think of that and put that together is say something was going to happen to this uh, underwater city encased in mm-hmm. glass or whatever they're going to encase it in. If it did cla- crack and the water came rushing in, it would be the opposite thing, almost. <laughs> It'd be it, like it would the, be uh, like the third Jaws movie or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Third Jaws movie. All right. I think well, it was the third one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the one that nobody watched. <laughs> oh, bad joke. Those bad. effects. So bad. good. <laughs> Say if you ever wanted to visit Underwater City, it could happen... In Japan. In Japan. You'd have to go to Japan for it. They do a lot of things first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on, we have some NASA and Microsoft have teamed up to work on a software called OnSite, which will allow scientists to work virtually on Mars via wearable technology. So they're going to put more robots on Mars? Uh, well, the plan is to... The, the current robot, the Mars rover or whatever, is gonna, going to take pictures and stuff and then... From there, they'll send another robot or something like that where scientists can work on a virtual Mars landscape kind of ah, thing. Ah, so once completed, OnSite's going to give scientists... I'm just reading the um, the stuff that we have written down here. OnSite will give scientists the ability to plan and conduct operations on Mars in addition to the Mars Curiosity ro- rover. It utilizes data acquired from the rover itself to extend Curiosity's existing planning tools by making a 3D simulation of the landscapes. Yep. Um, See, Mars is going to be completely inhabited by just androids and robots (laughs) walking around. But what what they're going to do is basically like uh, like uh, you know landscapers here geographers right. and stuff like that. That's what that's what they okay yeah. That's what they're going to use basically. Well, that's 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 really cool. So maybe they can uh, plan a site, a uh, place where you know people can have a colony. You at see, some so point, maybe at if some we point. can deem that. Say so, hey, this spot's pretty good. You know, here's, if we were to do that, yeah. but. That's going to be cool because, and why is why it's important to well, not really important, but why it's interesting to us is because when you're making a um, when you're making a three D simulation, that's like a video game environment, almost. So it's going to look like, say, the world map and travel area inside of your favorite like video game that has a lot of exploration, but it's literally Mars <laughs> in digital form. So what do you moon do? base chat forum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I always find all the NASA news pretty interesting. Yeah, there was a. Did we want to talk about the? I don't think I put the asteroid. Oh, the on water there. one. Uh, no, yeah. Didn't some asteroid like fly past the Earth that had its own moon or something? Yeah, there was like the asteroid two thousand four. The letters after that, I don't even remember. I I think I didn't put it in here because I think we had enough. We had yeah. Plenty of news. Yeah. But there was an asteroid that came flying by, and it it got relatively close, but it still wasn't as close, uh, like, as our moon is. It wasn't that close, but sometime in the really distant future, there's supposed to be another asteroid that comes even closer. And then we'll have two time. moons. Whoa. I just think it's interesting because, like, it had its own moon. That's huge. That's ridiculously large. You have this object me. who flies around infinitely in space, well, in an orbit, obviously, but pretty much, and then it has a, a moon of its own. So, you know, that just kind of shows how gravity works and things like that in outer space. It's pretty cool. Okay, what what was it that the University of Rochester did, Caleb? Um, they, what did they create recently about what water bouncing, I heard, of they some kind? They have made a certain... Um, Hydrophobic material. All right, so... All right, a multifunctional metal surface by producing a hierarchical nano microstructure with Why did you fill this second script laser with so many pulses. big words? I have no idea. What is that in layman's terms for those who do not speak in science? It, it makes water bounce off a of metal. Oh. <laughs> like literally bounce like a bouncy ball. So I saw the video. It was Is that with freaky. surface tension or does that have to do with the material it was made out of? It's a, it says it's a super hydrophobic metal off which water will literally bounce. 
It's just the way the metal's made. It just, like, it bounces it off. So it's super water know. resistant. So if this metal, if we made our cars out of this metal, we would never have to worry about, you know, windshield wipers or rain or anything like that. However, it would... How do you wash it? It washes right. itself. It washes itself. It's self-cleaning. Oh, really? Yeah. That's it's, the... What if kind of weird. this got polluted in the ocean, though? What, it'd be well, like... Oh, what's okay. in what's what's in what's interesting about this though is I'm I'm literally picturing like this a car made out of this metal right, and suddenly it's raining really hard so the rain is like projecting itself off of the car so the rain become will send itself onto other things like it, it's just I don't know it makes me it makes me think of it's like almost like a fountain that. Is rain? I don't know. I can't think of how to really pronounce it. If, if you saw the video, it's just projectile like raindrops. Boing. Yeah, yeah. you have like raindrops, like literally going boing and flying off. Right. So that that's that's cool. really interesting. And I, I mean, I can understand that for purposes for um, vehicles, making them easier to clean out. However, it would be expensive. Probably really so. We'd have to expensive. wait till it does get more cost efficient. And then maybe we could add it to cell phones and stuff like that. Science is expensive. Science is quite expensive. But yeah, really cell is. phones is a good thing, though, because then if you dropped it in water, you wouldn't have to really worry about it, I'd say. Yeah. And just be like, huh, oh, I dropped my phone in the in the puddle. Whoopsie Darn. daisy. Oh, well, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks to my fancy protective casing that okay. has... <laughs> That is what my phone is made out of. <laughs> Advertisement? What's going on? I, no, no, we're not getting paid. We're a no. nonprofit organization. Yeah, we're just joking we're around. Just joking. I don't know, but I think that's interesting. It is. I love science. Science is cool. I like biology myself. I'm really good at biology. But uh, next up, we will have talk about chocolate. It's for the last part of the show. Yes. And on the break, the song we're going to play is uh, Yoda from Al Yankovic. Again. Okay. And you are listening to the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio, and we will be right back. We are the Nerd Edification Hour podcast, and this is Alternation Radio. I'm Jake. I'm Rachel. I'm Caleb, and now we have Jake. our last bit of yes. news. What is the last bit of news? Well, it's food news. Yes, it is. We haven't had this segment in a while. Specific kind of food. It's a tasty treat. Everyone loves to eat. It's chocolate. Mm, Chocolate. 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 But there's some trouble a brewing in the world of chocolate. Oh, Oh, snap. What is it? What is it, Jake? I don't know. Dude, <laughs> you came up with I don't know what news this is. You go. All right, fine, Rachel. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> it has something to do with uh, okay, Great Britain. Okay, okay. so guys, um, most people are familiar with um, the chocolate brand um, Cadbury. They make those little tiny Cadbury eggs at Easter time. Yeah. Yeah. That you can buy at the dollar Um, store. So pretty much no more posh British chocolate. (gasps) What? No more posh British chocolate. As a result of a settlement with the Hershey's company, um, let's buy British Imports, that part of their um, company, or LBB, um, agreed this week to stop importing all British chocolate, all Cadbury chocolate made overseas. The company also agreed to halt imports on the Kit Kat bars made in Britain. We're still going to have Kit Kats. Don't misunderstand. We're just not going to have the British Kit Kats. It's a different packaging. It looks the same, different font. Looks um, like a, more like a classic style. Um, it, the Also, Toffee Crisps, which because of their orange packaging and yellow line brown script, too closely resemble Reese's peanut butter crisps cups. Um, So they're not going to bring those in anymore. Um, Yorkie chocolate bars, which infringe on the York peppermint patty and Miss Perry's beloved Maltesers. So no more Maltesers. Pretty much any of the Cadbury chocolates that are made in Britain, we're not going to get anymore. So if you have a... um, (laughs) If... Now, I'm not sure if this is going to affect what's carried at World Market since, you know, they're known to carry a bunch of British-made chocolates. So, locally, our World Market is moving out to um, the beach, so... Oh. Yeah. 
I don't know. Well, they they have a sale going on right now because they're moving over so, to me. So my side, my turn. Go there like right now and get all the British chocolate that you can possibly handle slash afford well, and get all the fancy British posh chocolates that you can because it won't it's be. It's gonna go away because oh, uh-huh, you're poor, you poor people. You see this? Oh, so so would you? I can do you are being with? insulting, I Caleb. Can, I can buy all the fancy British chocolates oh, I want. Oh shush! You I'm hush your mouth. Fancy. It's going on. I have no I'm idea. Keep going. He's just gonna keep going. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. Well, anyway. I'll go on anyway. My fancy yacht to my poor uh, Would you stop? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, like I said, it's gonna. They're gonna stop bringing them in. So, what's out there now is all that's left. That's it, unfortunately. It's done. So, so, so go purchase your fancy British chocolate <sighs> while you can, because it will soon be gone. We all gone because I bought okay, it. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Stop, stop. <laughs> Just stop it right now. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So I, I don't. Okay. One thing I want to say is I don't like the fact that all the stores are moving out to the beach. You do realize that all of our industry is moving out toward the beach. I know, too. and I don't like and it. The people it's like who, a leech. Well, the people on the beach have been saying to us, um, city dwellers, for years, we have to drive all the way in town to get to <laughs> into the stores in the mall. <laughs> and also, same thing. Or we have to drive to Destin. We have Pier Park, though. But now we did. Years ago, they had to drive in town to yeah, go to the mall true. and stuff like this. So now... We didn't have a movie theater or anything. We had to go in town to watch our movies. All right. And so now that's kind of reversing its reversing. So exactly now, now I have to waste gas going out to the beach. No, of all those for all those years for all those years that we sit, we're going. Ha ha! You have to drive in town, and now they're like jokes on you. Ha ha! Uh-huh. I don't really care one way or another. I just, honestly, I don't want to drive thirty minutes to go to GameStop. That's one thing. I just well, want the game stuff to stay far, As far as I know, well, there is one in. There's good uh, restaurants over there's here. There's one though. in Tyndall, as much as I love our mall store. So. It is, Tyndall, it, the Air Force Base? Yeah, there's one on Tyndall Parkway, right oh, across from the Parkway. Walmart. I thought you meant like in Tyndall. I can't go in there. Uh, no. I'm not military. Mm-hmm. I can't go in there either. So I used to be able to go in there. Same but, here, oh. but here we go. But yeah. He so, messed up. Uh, no, got into no, some no, trouble. No, 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 no. Different. It's a whole different story. I'm not going to. No. I won't open that can of worms because right. it's a can of worms. Maybe so another show. Open. But that that is our show for today. <laughs> that is our show, and we actually have two outro songs. Since, since we have time. Since we have time, special. We have uh, the Ganondorf battle f- and... The what uh, battle? Neo Ganondorf from, Ganondorf from Zelda. Okay. From Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda and the uh, Neo Chase from Freedom Planet, which I have still yet to beat because I've been... Fun crazy. stuff. Fun so stuff. you guys have <laughs> a great day. Enjoy that sunshine. Enjoy that kind of w- not really warm weather, but warm-ish Caleb-ish. weather. Caleb. Did we mention the 40 subscriber thing? Yes. yes, we did. We did. Oh. It was in the middle of the show. I wasn't paying attention. No. You were half asleep. <laughs> you, you were sleeping. <laughs> okay. And remember to go enjoy your pawn chocolates out there. And we will be back next week. Stay fancy till then. Bye. Bye. Bye.